Hello everybody, Dave Shopius here. Welcome to my robot lab. Today I want to show you a really neat upgrade I did. Uh, I've been working on upgrades for the past five years on this thing. Um, but I'm kind of coming down to the end on the last few major ones I want to do. Uh, as you can see, I've got him all taken apart, uh, at least the torso's off. And uh, I've got, you know, little things here and there like uh, my uh, head sitting there and torso's in the other room and there's my helper down there. Right, Sky? Yeah, she doesn't like to be on camera. Anyway, back to the uh, robot. So, here he is. Um, and what I... What we're here for today is to kind of show you what I've done. Uh, ignore all this. We're not going to go over all these units. I've got all that stuff covered on other videos. Um, what I what I want to talk about today is this. I went ahead and mounted a small single board computer right on the robot. Uh, before what I was doing. I had uh, my control software called Synthium uh, Arc. It's Arc software by Synthium. <clears throat> Pardon me. Running on a laptop, going through my home Wi-Fi, and uh, connecting to several EZBs that I have. Uh, these are little units that take the um, information from the control software and distribute it around the robot to make things work. So what I want to do, uh, that was kind of clunky. It worked really good, but uh, I wanted something a little more streamlined. I didn't want to maintain a Wi-Fi network to my computer, from the computer to the robot. So I mounted this uh, B-Link U59 um, little single board mini PC on here. It's got three USB ports and uh, actually, I'm sorry, four USB ports. And a bunch of other stuff going for it, Wi-Fi and, and whatnot. Um, but what I've done beyond that um, is I have these USB cables running. There's three of them running, one to each of my EZBs. So the computer is directly connected to the EZB. Three EZBs, one there, one over here, one, and they uh, they operate several things throughout the computer, throughout the, the uh, robot. And then the other one comes all the way down here into the leg section, and there it sits, hooks up to that. So those control uh, boards, I guess you could call them, are directly interfaced right into the computer, and there's no lag, no Wi-Fi to deal with. It's really nice, and I'll, I'll give you a little demonstration later. But uh, my Synthium Arc software now runs on this computer, and when the robot powers on, Windows turn. This is a Windows computer. Windows boots up automatically automatically starts the ARC software and sets up the robot to run. And from then on, it's uh, I pretty much command him through voice recognition. I've got some buttons on the front of the torso that um, we can go into in another video <clears throat> that, that also can control certain things. But mostly he's uh, got a personality generator that runs. He does his own thing from time to time, like you see it like Walt Disney World or whatever. And uh, I can command him with, uh, I have dozens of different commands that make him do different things. Up to and including, uh, tell me the weather. <laughs> it's where I'm at. So it's pretty cool. So one challenge I had was shutting down. Um, powering up is cool. Pardon my fingers. Powering up was cool. Powering up was cool because um, like I said, everything starts automatically and sets up the robot. Now, powering down, if anybody knows anything about Windows computers, you got to shut the Windows computers down first uh, a certain way or it won't. Um, it'll, it'll corrupt. There's a good chance it'll corrupt. So it's got to go through a shutdown procedure. You just can't flip the switch down there, you know, and power down the robot and kill the 
kill the computer. So that left me a challenge. Um, there is a way to do it um, remotely, and we can get into that later. Um, I can do it through a voice command that um, activates a, a script in Arc that will shut down the computer properly. Or I have a button on the front of the torso that will do it too. Uh, it um, activates the script in Arc and Arc will shut down that, that Windows computer properly. But then what happens is my robot's running. So it's a two-step procedure. It's kind of a pain in the butt. I got to shut down the computer, then reach down here and turn off that switch. Um, as long as we're talking about this, this is a, a, um, a uh, Alexa switch that all I got to do is tell Alexa to, to power on and it'll power on and turn the robot on. So it's gonna, I'll show you that in a minute. So uh, getting back to the uh, issue at hand, uh, how do I tell the robot to power down and have the whole thing shut down? Well, there is a solution and it's really cool. Um, I've used these throughout the house and other things on like audio equipment and stuff. This is a power strip, a smart power strip. Um, it, it, this particular model is set up to plug right into a wall socket. So on the back of it, there'll be a, a male prong stick and also you just plug it in a socket. <clears throat> you plug whatever device that you want to monitor on off right here. And when that senses a current being, uh, being either coming on or going off, it'll switch these outlets down here on or off accordingly. So it's, it's really cool. And um, it also has a, um, a circuit breaker uh, up to 15 amps that you can reset, which helps protect things. And it has a adjustable uh switch right here i'm sorry a um kind of a knob or a screw that adjusts the threshold of sensitivity for this so what i had to have done i have taken the power for the computer that's mounted on the um robot plugged it right into this controlled plug and then the rest of the robot plugs into one of these it's really simple and when uh, I tell the computer to come on, I'm sorry, when I tell the robot to come on or turn the switch on, this socket will sense that the computer is coming on and then it'll switch the rest of the robot on. And vice versa, when I tell the robot to shut down, this socket where the computer is plugged into, the uh, it'll sense that the computer is turned off, has turned itself off, it'll switch these sockets off so the rest of the robot goes off. Pretty freaking neat. Um, now, the way I did that, again, I have uh, the power right here for the, list, for the SBC running down through all this mess, <laughs> down through the leg section, down through there, and uh, down into the knee. You can see where my power switch is that I always have on because I have Alexa um, going to switch it on and off for me. It, it comes into here. I've got a, a, a power cord coming up, which, and there it is. And it's hard to see, and I apologize. Um, but if it's the power cord plugs into the back of this doodad here, uh, this this power strip, and you can see this is the this back back box here. That's the power supply for the computer. It's plugged into that one controlled uh, outlet that I I showed you on the box, and this is the rest of the the robot power that comes down and plugs into it. This goes on up into the computer. I'm sorry. This goes on up into the uh, the robot. 
This comes from the computer that's monitored. These are switched on and off accordingly to this state and the robot gets switched on and off through this power cord that goes up into the rest of the robot. And I have, you know, power supply units, converters in there. So that's what it, that's what it uh, switches on and off. I have, those are sprinkled throughout the robot. I have two right here. They're 12 volts uh, from, from uh, AC power, 12240 AC power coming from down there. Uh, these are switched on and off by that uh, power smart strip that I showed you. And I have a daisy, <clears throat> two of them here, daisy trained up, another one here, 12 volt. And this is a big 12 volt, uh, a huge uh, power supply converter for my arms. So, and that powers all my robot. And I actually have two more down there, <laughs> a 24 volt and a 12 volt down here. So I got a lot of power supplies sprinkled throughout this guy because he takes a lot of power, a lot of juice. So with that said, um, let me give you a little demonstration about how this all, straighten him out here. Now what will happen is I'll tell the computer to, I'll tell Alexa to go ahead and power up this guy. And you'll notice First thing that happens is the light on the computer comes on and then within a few seconds the rest of the robot will light up. Okay, so let's try that now. Alexa, turn on robot power. Okay. There it is. Okay. You notice all the lights are on? The power strip, smart strip, did its work. Okay. Let's watch the startup procedure. I don't have the head on, so you won't get any animation up there, but you'll get a little bit. Now the Windows, the Windows computer is now booted up and it's starting up ARC and you'll hear the, that means it's loading the easy bees, three of them. Okay, online. Probably because he doesn't have his head. It's homing all the different encoders and stuff I have loaded on the motors. Okay, that's done. He's ready to go. Okay, great. A little bit of a bow. <laughs> all right, now. Here is the other rub. How do we get into that computer now without a monitor and a mouse and all that? My speech recognition circuits were designed to interpret normal human speech. It's listening to me through the speech recognition. So anyway, the way we do that, the way I do that, is I remote into it from another computer over my home Wi-Fi network. Okay. Um, and I, well, what do you mean? <laughs> okay, there's a few bugs I still got to work out. Because it's, it's listening to me right now and it shouldn't be. So, um, I am uh, going to remote in to hit that computer on that, that does not compute. guy right there from this computer over my home network by going through a program called TVN Viewer. I'm sorry, TNC Viewer. You just, it's pretty easy. 
uh, put in the uh, IP address for that computer over there, connect to it over my Wi-Fi, and boom, there is ARC. And um, I see I already have a problem here. I got a one of the uh, easy bees are disconnected. That's because I have the head off, okay? And it tried to set that up, and when it went through and tried to set up the encoder, it uh, disconnected itself. So um, that's okay for right now. I just wanted to show you how easy it is to get this. This is the desktop of the computer over on the robot. So this is not the desktop for this computer. I'm remoting in right now from, uh, let me get rid of this. Please repeat your statement in English. Yeah, he's being obnoxious right now because one of his units are down. That's the problem. Um, this is the desktop from my computer my here. Were designed to interpret normal human speech. And uh, this is the desktop for the other one. So uh, if I wanted to uh, shut him down now, I would either could hit this button right here, shut down PC. I could tell him to shut down over voice recognition, or I have a button on the um, front of the torso that can do it. So let's try voice recognition and see what happens. See if it's working because of that problem we're having. Because the because of the uh, head being off, and I have some issue, one of the easy bees is disconnected. So robot initiate shutdown procedure. It worked. Okay, watch that light go off. That'll mean that the PC is shut down properly. It takes a minute. Because it's going through its Windows shutdown procedure right now. There it is. Now the rest of the robot should go off in a second or two. Okay. Ignore that buzzing. <laughs> that again is an issue with that one easy B and B disconnected and not set up properly. So um, there we are. Short of a couple little bugs. Well, they're not really bugs. It's because I, again, my my head was off and I have motors in there that have encoders. And if uh, everything's not hooked up, the easy B will stay offline. So. I just uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, next time I come, I'll make another video with the torso on, hopefully, and we can get more stuff, him to do more stuff. His arms working and everything and all the stuff working in unison. Thanks for watching. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.